Kevin. Um, so welcome everyone. Tonight I'm going to be talking about drinks and uh, what is good for your sugars and what hidden drinks you think are good for your sugars will mess them up even though they might not have any calories in them. Um, I will touch on alcohol as well but I figured we're having a nice hot spell. It's a good idea to know what's good and what's bad and I had a great question and email from a couple of you saying Oh, I don't know what to have. I know Coca-Cola and lemonade isn't good, so should I go for orange juice? So I'm going to strip it all back. I'm going to tell you what's good, what's not, why, and then you can make your own choice. Um, so live stream offline. Yeah, Suzanne, you can hear me. Hi, Clive. Um, so Clive, hope me, let me know if you can hear me because a few of you are having issues where you can't see me you're getting live stream offline um thanks internet i uh i appreciate you dropping the signal right now hi candice hello leslo um uh says live stream offline right Turn on microphone. Right. What about now? I'm back now. Fantastic. Um, nothing like turning it off and turning it back on again. Yay. Okay, so hopefully we're good now. So just to recap, I'm going to be walking you through the right drinks, and I'm talking alcohol, I'm talking soft drinks, fizzy drinks, soda drinks, whatever you call them in your area of the world. Ask any questions as we go along. Um, you know, I've had questions, is orange juice better because we know soda's out? Um, and I'm just going to deconstruct all of it. Um, it's really key that you stay, hey Clive, fantastic, hey Leslo. Um, it's really key that you stay, stay hydrated. Some of the medications you can be put on as a diabetic can cause you to flush more water out. Um, you know, you've got Genuvia and products like that that go to your kidneys and tell it to dump out the sugar. The problem is that with the sugar goes the water. Um, and the same if you have high sugars, um, that means that you lose more water. Um, in hot weather, your sugars can behave erratically. So for some people, they will go low. For other people, they'll go high. And actually, if they are going high, that's generally a sign of dehydration. The sugar is more concentrated because you don't have as much liquid. Hey, Saran. Um, so it's really important to drink and drink to thirst. But sometimes water is just boring. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I know water is the, the gold standard. It is the best thing to have. But there are times when you're out and about or you're at home and you're drinking a lot, that actually you just like a different flavor. So, and of course we've got the Diet Cokes and the Diet Pepsis. And actually in the UK, they're becoming more popular because there's been a sugar tax introduced. And in Scotland, um, there is a lot of cafes up there because they have got a slightly different version of the sugar tax than the rest of the UK. Um, and there's a lot of cafes there that aren't even bothering to stock the full sugar Coke um, because people will just go for the Diet Coke. Um, which on the surface sounds like a great thing. And obviously they're not having sugar, so that's great. Oh, Jeff, I'm going to dash your dreams in a minute. He's just asked if fresh oranges are okay. Uh, I'm going to come to that. I'm sorry. I apologize in advance, sir. Um, so the issue with that is that just because it contains no calories, I mean, it has Aspartame has been tested uh, and tested and tested and there's loads of uh, theories if you go into on the internet of all the horrible things that aspartame causes. 
Um, it's also known as NutraSweet, belongs to Coca-Cola. And actually, we have no evidence that it does cause dramatic cancers and do awful things that they talk about. We do have evidence that it slightly raises heart disease. But what we have even more evidence for is that people that drink diet drinks way more than people who don't. So the problem isn't in the fact that it has no calories. The problem is that your brain is way too clever. And usually those drinks are very sweet. You drink the drink and the body releases insulin in preparation for the sugar hitting. And we know that this happens with um, aspartame. And we know that it happens, uh, particularly sucralose is another bad one. So um, the brain says, get ready, body, sugar's on the way. And of course, the sugar never turns up. So uh, the body goes back to the brain and goes, brain, what's going on? Where's my sugar? It never turned up and the brain's like, oh, I'm sorry, we better have some more. So what they've found with the artificial sweeteners, which by which the man-made ones, so aspartame, um, saccharin, uh, not quite as popular, but belongs in that group, sucralose, which is the latest one, if you like, um, is that people overcompensate for the calories that are missing. So people that are using artificial sweeteners are larger than people who don't um, for those reasons. And actually, you don't need to be a scientist. You can look at the fact that we're using artificial sweeteners more than we ever have. And we've got more weight, diabetes, health issues than we've ever had. Now, if the problem, um, if we're just taking out the sugar and replacing it with artificial sweeteners, then that should solve the big problem. And actually in the 50s, when they first discovered saccharin, it was discovered by accident. They were making something and the guy licked his finger and realized it was sweet. Um, they thought that that was it. They had the cure to obesity. They were done. <laughs> Obviously, we now know that our bodies are far more clever than that. Um, <clears throat> sorry for the glitching. I'm not honestly doing it personally. I um, Who was it that said, let's just blame Brexit? Let's just go for that. Um, <laughs> I am meant to have the fastest internet and, in, well, be with the fastest internet provider. But I may be, uh, I, you know, try and tell everyone I'm all powerful, but I can't control the internet. And I do occasionally mess up with technology. I will say that. Um, so... Uh, so those sweeteners artificially made are not the best choices. So that's your Diet Cokes, that's your other diet drinks. I'm not saying never have them. I'm saying recognize that they have an impact and use them appropriately. So you might be out with friends and they're all having a drink and you fancy a Diet Coke. So it's an occasional thing. That's fine. It's when you're drinking large quantities of it. Um, so... What about natural sweeteners? Now, Debbie's already spoken about that. So the natural, there is a lot of natural sweeteners out there, some better than the others. Um, my go-to sweeteners are erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. It means it comes from predominantly plants. It is a natural product. And stevia, which is a protein that comes from the stevia, well, the stevia bush. Um, it's not the stevia bush, but anyway, comes from a lovely little bush in South America. Um, and is extracted and refined. So those two work together very well. Um, and monk fruit is another one that's good. Um, and they don't mess around with the sugars and they don't cause extra consumption. They don't upset the balance. Um, there are other sweeteners out there like xylitol and mannitol. They are also sugar alcohols, um, but they contain a few more calories and they can cause upset stomachs and have laxative effects. So erythritol and stevia are the two that are great for you guys as diabetics um, and they won't mess your system up um, and they cook well and freeze well. You'll need to find your own personal combination. Uh, Swerve is uh, great in the States. Natvia and Sucrin are two other brands uh, outside of the States that are widely available worldwide, actually. They're, well, Natvia is Australian. Um, and they are good. I find they work really well. Um, hey, Alan. So monk fruit sweetener is good for diabetes. Stevia drinks are okay. So you've got um, green cola uh, that you can get very easily in the UK. That's stevia sweetened, um, as I'm thinking. Um, 
and uh, you can get Zevia in the States, which is a Z or Z, depending on where you are, E-V-I-A. And those are lots of uh, fizzy drinks, soda drinks that are sweetened with stevia. There are more and more around. But it is dead, dead easy to make your own. So carbonated water, soda water, fizzy water, whatever, <laughs> sparkling water. I'm just trying to think of all the different things that's called ever around the world. Um, and just go online and buy fruit extract so you know or fruit essence so like vanilla essence essence of the vanilla bean you can get um, you know you can get essence of pretty much everything so raspberry apple mango lemon whatever you fancy um, very concentrated so it comes exactly the same as the vanilla um, and you just put one drop in your fizzy water and then sweeten to taste and that is a soft drink now okay when you're going out that might be a little bit more tricky but for home on these hot summer days for those of you in the northern hemisphere um, it's such a refreshing cool drink and it's just nice to have something that's a bit different um, so Splenda is predominantly sucralose and sucralose is horrendous so Candice is asking is Splenda okay and uh, I would use it with caution so sucralose is particularly bad at causing sugar spikes there was a great program or a little snippet done by a news crew in Australia. I think it was the ABC channel. Um, if I can find it, I'll put it in Facebook, where they just got a group of people together and they had um, sucralose sweetened soft drink. And uh, it put their sugars up like crazy as compared to normal, even though there was no calories in it. So sucralose is well known for spiking sugars. So I would avoid Splendor. But there's always a but, and what I would say is test. So test and see what happens. Testing is so crucial when you're a diabetic, you're wanting to avoid carbohydrates. So, you know, if your favorite drink is sweetened with Splenda or sucralose, try it and see. And then you know for yourself, I think it's really important that you have first-hand experience um, rather than just taking my word for it. You know, try and see if your body will prove me wrong. Um, so Debbie fruit essences are available everywhere so it can be called fruit extract and it's just little bottles um, any um, you know cake sugar craft shop will sell it sorry um, Amazon will sell them you can get maple syrup extract you can get an extract of pretty much anything um, and I mean anything like mandarin um, blood oranges pretty much any fruit you can think of um, so you can really get quite inventive and make your own, you know, so you can do pina colada, you can get pineapple and put a bit of coconut milk in and or co cream, coconut cream and put a bit of sweetener in and you've got a pina colada without any of the carbs. Um, so the key is to to keep on trying new flavours um, and find the mix that you like. You can also get cordials. Um, you know, water flavorings, um, and there are more of those. So there's a great German brand, and off the top of my head, I think it's called Gurm, G-U-R, it's got a really funny name, relatively expensive, but it's the same thing. It's basically the fruit essence with the sugar in a little container or stevia in a little container, and you squeeze it in and you can take it with you. So there are more and more options out there. Be careful when, um, <clears throat> so I just want to quickly cover cafes and I want to cover alcohol. So be careful when you order a cappuccino or anything else like that at Starbucks. Other coffee shops are available um, because uh, of the same thing. Although that you might have just a latte or a cappuccino that has no sugar in it, there's a vast amount of milk in there and a huge amount of carbohydrate. So a lot of the coffee shops now are happy to put cream in with your coffee, which is far better for you carbohydrate and sugar wise. So don't be caught out by thinking I'm just having a coffee and it's not sweet. If it is has got a large amount of milk in, you can be hiding a day's worth of carbohydrates in that drink and it can really knock you off and you'll be hungry and you won't know why. Um, so uh, yeah. 
just be careful. So Mike is saying, is soda water and diet tonic water okay, Mary? Um, be aware, most diet tonic waters contain the standard sweetener, so that is your aspartame, your um, saccharin and your sucralose. So if it's an occasional thing, absolutely. You know, you go out to the pub every so often with your friends or to the bar with your friends and you have a gin and tonic, that's fine. Um, if it's something that you're drinking bottles of every day, then I would stop or slow down. It can really stand in your way. Um, so Candice is saying, Gruel, lol, I got a couple of bottles of something called sparkling ice, one lemon lime and one strawberry kiwi. Has no carb, sugar, etc., but it's a bit uh, fizzy and it cured by cravings for pop or juice, lol. Yeah, and there are some. So in the UK, actually, it's a brand that Coca-Cola owns, which makes it sound French, but it's actually Coca-Cola. And it's called Glasso. Um, and it's smart water and they do exactly the same pretty much what I've told you to do which is fizzy water with extract or fru uh, fruit essences in um, and they've got extra electrolytes in there so they call them smart water and those are great by all means go for that you can add slices of cucumber slices of lemon get as fancy as you want you know, it's important if you're having a nice drink to make a bit of an event of it put a uh, you know it in a special glass and there's a reason why chefs run around and um, wipe every little mark off the dish and make sure it's presented nicely because we eat with our eyes. So drink with your eyes as well. You know, make a make an event out of it. Jess says, do you differentiate between milk and cream? Seems a contradiction. Um, not at all. So it's like you start off with milk. Um, and uh, and at the top of the milk is the fatty layer, so that's your cream, and then it's reducing more and more of the liquid and the protein and leaving more and more of the fat behind. So you go milk, cream, butter, cheese. And as you go up, you're getting less and less and less carbs. Um, so that's the reason why um, cream is better than milk. If you're in the States, you want double cream. If you're in Canada, you want 4%. If you're in the UK, you want double. So you want to look at the carbohydrate count on the back. That's what you're interested in. That's what drives diabetes and that's what drives hunger. Um, so milk is much higher in carbs. So cream is okay. Go crazy. <laughs> if, you know, the squirty cream that they put on top of your coffee, that is totally fine. There is a small amount of glucose in there, but not enough to cause any problems. Um, you know, double cream in your coffee, enjoy. You know, um, so so you want if you're drinking milk go for the milk that has the highest fat content fat is your friend <laughs> when you're looking down and you've got uh your you know your pants are a little bit tighter than you would like that is not fat that is stored carbohydrates and that is what's causing the diabetes so you don't want to give your body any more carbohydrates to store so that's what we're doing. So carbohydrates, I want you now, you know, I talk about turning everything on its head. I want you now to see carbohydrates in the same way you used to see fat. Just switch them around and everything changes. Um, so, yes, so Dolores, I'm not completely au okay fait with the 1% because we tend to have, you know, we're simple creatures in the UK. They colour our milk lids so we know the difference. So skim milk is green, semi-skimmed is red, so uh, and the full fat milk is blue. <laughs> they don't even try and teach us percentages. Um, so, um, so you want the milk that has the lowest carbs. So just look at the back of the bottle and go for the ones that has the lowest carbs. So Kevin is absolutely right. We're really lucky in the UK. We've got this. We get amazing Jersey or Guernsey cows. They're little Channel Islands that have beautiful well cows own the island no they don't um but they do amazing we call it gold top which has the highest fat content and it is delicious um so yes i can remember milk being delivered on the farm and we'd always you'd want to be the first one that got the milk bottle because it wasn't homogenizing you had that lovely little chunk of fat on the top and everyone wanted that so go for that enjoy that um, we're kind of running out of time a little bit and I want to touch on alcohol so we'll talk about alcohol next week um, but what I will say is that
the clearer the alcohol, so the spirit, the lower the carbohydrates. So I will take you through um, alcohol. I will share the science with you. So what we do know is that people that reg or diabetics that regularly have a glass of alcohol a day, so please a glass, not a bottle. Um, uh, it's actually protective. They have lower rates of heart disease and everything else. So I will talk you through the um, little maze that is alcohol so that you can still go out and enjoy yourself. Thank you, Lorna. Lorna says 1% is skimmed fully, I think. Um, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I will, uh, will memorise. Um, Kevin is totally right. Drink gin. Uh, <laughs> um, yes. And uh, I don't know if it's happening around the world, but gin is on the rise. And um, there's lots of nice flavored gins out there, which are really nice with soda water, um, particularly if you like raspberries like me. Um, so what I have been asked as well is I get regular uh, emails and things from you saying, what do I do? Please, can you help me? Do you have a pack that you put together that has menus and recipes and tells me where to start? Because I want to sort this out. So I have done just that. Now, a lot of you have my Blood Sugar Revolution book already. You've already bought that. So I've put together a package that is the book, which you'll get emailed, but all your menu, menu plans and everything else as well. For those of you that are already my members that are watching this, this is not for you. You've already got everything. Please don't buy it. <laughs> You're well, if you want to spend money, you're welcome to, but please don't. For the rest of you that are just starting and you want something to help you move ahead, then that's what I've designed it for. So I have to now press a little button somewhere, or look, I'm sure I can do this. Uh, this is the one I want. And a little thing will pop up. And there you go. That should be there. So it's a little starter pack that has all the bits and pieces in to get you, well, as it says, started. Um, ah, so Dolores says, I saw a Mimisa wine at Aldi's. Has anyone tried this? Um, no, but, you know, if I have to do it for in the, you know, so that I have clarity and I can give you some good advice, then I'm willing. Um, Kevin says Aldi has just had a gin festival. Um, Jeff is uh, quite liking the cut of your jib, Kevin. He agrees with you on the gin. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with a little bit of gin. Don't they call it the crying alcohol? Um, uh, so, yeah, actually gin and vodka are the same thing. Scott, that tells you far too much about me. Um, so, hydrated, finding some drinks you like. Um, mim mimosa, mimosa. Okay, I will keep an eye out for that, Dolores. Um, so hydration is key, really, really important. Um, because there's masquerades, there's hunger all the time. Uh, you've got other metabolic changes going on in the body in the hot weather. Drink, drink, drink. Um, and be aware that just because it has no calories doesn't mean it has no impact. Test your sugars, make sure. Erythritol and stevia are my go-to sweeteners. You can buy drinks that are sweetened like that, or it's really easy to make your own. And on that note, I shall see you guys next week. You know the deal. If you're watching me on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, um, and join us next week. We'll be deconstructing alcohol so you know the best ones for you. Um, Suzanne, I'll come back to you with the red and white wine. Ta-ta for now, everyone. Have a fabulous week. Bye.